if you are wondering how to get your teacher to like you, you are in luck. I've got three tips from you from a high school teacher on how to get your teachers to like you and some things not to do, to not get on their list, okay? So let me give you my three hacks for getting a teacher to like you. Hey, my name is Abby Day. I'm a certified life coach for teenager and I'm also a high school teacher. This is kind of a new adventure in my life, but I love being around teenagers and so... It's like my calling, it's like my dream. Um, but I've noticed some things. <laughs> I have noticed some things that as a teacher drive me off the walls. And I've noticed other things that make me really like, like a student that are just little and simple. And it's amazing how following either side of these can tilt my teacher-student relationship with them. So I wanted to share with you today three things that you can do to get your teacher to like you more. And of course, you can go back and check out some of my original videos on how to get teachers to like you. Those tips are still awesome and applicable. Super old videos, which are kind of fun to watch. Um, so check those out as well. But the first thing that I wanna share with you is don't expect a favor from your teacher. There is nothing that drives me nuts more than when a student comes up to me expecting like a favor and you're like what in the world would a student expect of a teacher can i sit by my friend can i maybe not do this assignment can i leave and be excused for a whole class like you would be amazed at the things students ask me that if they can do and i just look at them and i'm like no like who do you think i am santa claus like you have to be in my class like i'm not joking when i've had students ask me like oh can i just like not do this assignment today I'm like, well, do you want a zero on it? Right? Like some of the things students will ask me. So please don't expect favors from your teacher. Even if you have a great friendly relationship, don't expect them to be any different than a teacher that has a job to do and you have a job to do as a student. Don't forget that this is like a transactional relationship. I'm going to teach you something. You're going to do some work, right? And I'm going to share some knowledge. And so don't expect favors in there. Don't ask your teacher for crazy things. It just is, it's kind of wearing on that relationship and it gets tiresome because they're usually pretty ridiculous requests. The second thing is please come prepared for class every single day. I'm not joking. Every single day I get asked if I have a pencil or a piece of paper for my students. And I get, we live in a digital world and, but have a pencil in your backpack right? Have a pen. And the reason this one gets under my skin so much is because I'm teaching high school students, okay? 15, 16, 17, 18 years old. It's not my job to baby you. It's not my job to make this environment of a classroom like kindergarten. It's really not because we pass kindergarten. And I believe it's a disservice to you if I hand you every little thing you need in life when you very well know you're going to need to come to school with like something to write with because guess what when you show up for your first job they're going to give you like a laptop they're going to give you a little bit of training but then you are expected to show up and do your job on your own without a lot of prompting right so use this skill as like a call to to be a little bit more mature and bring what you're supposed to bring to class my last tip for you, you'll have to let me know if you think this is a personal opinion or something that applies to all teachers. I think it applies to all teachers, but don't get too casual. Here's what I mean by this. I love when I have genuine friendships with my students where I feel like we're friends and I respect them, they respect me, and we have fun in class. That's something I love. I love to have fun in class. It's one of the reasons I love teaching teenagers. We get to have so much fun but be careful you don't slip into the line of casual. I feel that especially as a young teacher that is kind of near to peer, that when this line is crossed, it creates awkwardness in our relationship that can be hard to bridge. And so don't get too casual with your teacher and always remember there's a level of respect, okay? So call them by their preferred title, um, answer questions with respect, and don't treat them buddy-buddy. Okay, so here's an example that's happened to me. Um, I've had students, and super innocent, I don't think anybody's ever trying to do something weird, but they're like, oh, hey, what you doing this weekend? And I was like, I like literally looked around and I was like, are you talking to me? Right, because that's the way you would address a peer, 
right? A peer sitting next to you would be like, oh, hey, what you doing this weekend, right? But like not a teacher. And so the appropriate way to ask that question, because I think that's a fine question. It was just asked with too much casualness for a relationship of respect, right? Would, would be like, hey, Mrs. Winslow, what are you doing this weekend? Do you see the difference there between, oh, hey, what you doing this weekend? And hi, Mrs. Winslow, what are your weekend plans, right? Or what are you doing this weekend? There's a level of respect there. And even just using my, my full official teacher name, right, Mrs. Winslow, um, that conveys respect. And one thing to remember with your teachers is this is not a relationship of equals. This is something I learned from a parenting course. Um, that applies to marriage or applies to relationships in general, that we have lots of different relationships in our life and we have relationships of equals. So that'd be like you and a friend, you and a sibling, um, you and a coworker, right? In the same position. Um, we're equal in our position and authority and our respect levels. Then there's positions of authority, right? Mom and dad are a position of authority because guess what? you're not on the same level of decision-making or responsibility as mom and dad as a, as a child. So mom and dad, authoritative, right? So same with teachers. I'm not on the same level. I'm not your, your peer. I am a level of authority. And so sometimes students will slip into a level of casualness that, for lack of a better word, threatens that level of authority or ignores that level of authority. And it can just feel really off and it can feel really disrespectful if not done right. So my advice for you is don't get too casual. So I hope that these tips help you out. These are ones that I see all the time that if you know you as a student were to clean up this behavior, I promise you it will change the way that your teachers see you and interact with you. So I hope this helps. If you are looking for more help in high school, don't be, uh, don't forget to check out my high school guide at my website, abbywinslow.com or join my monthly coaching program where I specialize in helping teen girls master high school and enjoy the experience. So can't wait to see you in my next video. Hope you subscribe. Abby J. Out.